Yeah, my name is Jim Erdmeyer. I was born and raised just outside of Chicago, but I've been living downtown for about 10 years. Uh, for a living, I trade and I'm also a full-time um, adult student. I went back to get my degree at DePaul University in finance. That was kind of a personal thing for me and also my wife is getting her PhD, so I had to have something uh, next, to, next to her master's and PhD. Um, in my free time, I'm really big on staying healthy, uh, both physically and mentally. Yeah, I think the two are really connected. But aside from that, you know, I like hanging out with my wife. We have two dogs. We actually met in a dog park. I started trading about 10 years ago. Um, I kind of got into it because I was working on the floor at the Chicago Board of Trade. And when I got down there and I saw the first opening bell, which was uh, at 9.30, I was hooked. It was just, you know, this chaotic yet orderly eruption of uh, just mayhem. And you know, I worked on the floor uh, during summers in high school. And after I graduated high school, you know, I went to college for a bit and then I decided that, you know, I didn't want to go down that path right now. So I returned to Chicago and I got my first gig at a prop shop. At that shop, I was trading crude oil futures and at that time, it was actually only on a simulator because they were putting this, like a group of us through their training program. Um, right now, I mostly trade NASDAQ futures. I look at the currency futures too at night just to see if there's anything going on. The yen, the pound, the euro. Right now, my strategy pretty much involves watching a couple of charts. Both are NASDAQ. One is um, two minute, the other is, I kind of go between 10 and 30. All I have on my charts are Bollinger Bands and the volume weighted average price. You know, lining up how many bids are there, how many asks, you know, how is the market responding to certain levels? That, that's what I'm watching. But I would say it's mostly focused on the, the tape or the, the DOM. Yeah, I think I like the idea just of the flexibility. You kind of just do what you do, and if it works, uh, you get funded. You know, there are some rules to follow, but I felt like uh, earned a trade was kind of walking a, a fine line in a good way between too many rules that become restrictive and flexibility. Um, I've I've heard of other places that have rules that seem to be set up just so you do fail and you kind of get recycled through the process and you know they don't those other places don't really seem like they have an intention of making money off their traders it seems like they just want you know to collect fees so you know I thought it was worth a shot and you know I was trading on my own and I was open to getting some more capital um, and it just it seemed like a, a good place to go so I gave it a try and you know I don't I don't think my first gauntlet worked out, maybe the second or third. You know, I've, I've gone through a bunch, um, but yeah, overall, I just, I just like the idea that, you know, there aren't all these different rules that you have to follow. You know, it seems like in other places, you'd have to like read a list of rules every morning just to remember what you can and cannot do. Whereas with the gauntlet, it was more, you know, just trade, you know, make money. That's, that's, that's what you're doing here, manage your risk. I think any advice that I would give to people starting their gauntlet and what I would have said to myself is, you know, don't, don't try to focus on making money or knocking it out of the park, you know, focus on your process on something that you will feel comfortable replicating with real money. The money will take care of itself. Basically, you know, you make, if you make trading the gauntlet or trading in general, a practice in discipline and patience, the money just follows. So I also think you need to know yourself. I know that sounds really cliche, but you really do have to know how you respond to different outcomes. Does a loss trigger you to make more errors? Does it take two losses? Do you get, you know, laxed after some wins? You know, you really have to know like how you're going to feel and act. For example, with me, I know that I can tend to get lax after, you know, a winning period. And that leads me to kind of stop doing the things that cause that winning period to happen to begin with because you think oh 
maybe you don't think this, but you feel like, okay, I got this now. I can kind of just coast through, but you always have to be, you know, on top of yourself and making sure that you're doing the right things. I think you also need to know why you, why you want to be a trader. If your why isn't strong enough, you're just not gonna, you're just not gonna survive.